MLB The Show is your home for postseason baseball. It's the second game of this ALCS between the Tampa Bay Rays and the Minnesota Twins. Hi again, everyone. Matt Vaskersian. Welcome to our special postseason coverage of baseball on the show. I'm joined by Mark DeRosa and Dan Plezak and Danny. An important ball game coming up here in game two. Yeah, it was a good start for these guys at home. They did what they needed to do in the opening game, and this crowd really showed up and made a difference as well. Should be an electric atmosphere again, so we'll see if the guys on the field can feed off it and take a commanding lead in this series. The postseason is officially in full swing. Lineups and first pitch coming up next. Jose Barrios is on the mound for game two. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Hey, Matt, thanks coming on Jose Barrios, and this guy has all the tools to be a great one. Great velocity with light, 94 to 97 miles an hour, power slider, and it's a big sweeper. His changeup is getting better. If this guy brings all three pitches one of these days, he has the potential to throw a no-hitter. This is line to left. And this will be pulled in just in front of the warning track for the first down. So next to the plate for Tampa Bay, Brandon Lau. He'll get to take his first cuts here. And he missed with the slur, so it goes to two and one. But we might be ice skating before we're through tonight. 39 degrees at first pitch. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Rosario is there. He hauls it in without any trouble. And there are two away. Joey Wendell digs in now. First chance for him here in the top of the first with nobody on. Here with two men out. A swing, and this ball is blasted to right field. Nothing's going to keep this one in the ballpark. And this one is gone. A home run. A solo shot here to straightaway right field. His first homer so far in the series as the Rays move out on top, one to nothing. What a way to get things started while playing on the road. Top of the first and a big fly. Just like that, they take the lead. slicing foul two out nobody on swing and a long drive again this one to deep center Buxton has to retreat to the track but he has it to retire the side Rays off and running early on a solo home run on to the bottom of the first it's now one nothing Tampa Tyler Glasnow will be on the bump for game two of the series. What do we need to know here, Danny? A change of scenery might be just what Glasnow needed. Started his career with the Pirates. Never been a question about the stuff. Big time arm. 95 to 97 mile an hour fastball. Good curveball. This guy is what they look like. Big strong guy. The concern with him, throwing enough strikes. If he's throwing strikes, he's tough to hit. At the plate, Jorge Polanco. It lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. Two and one now to the Twins leadoff man. Yeah. 
And that's into the corner of foul ball and right. The 2 2. Too high, and that cost him ball four. Well, there's only a one-run cushion to play with, so he's got to be upset after he walked the leadoff man here. Go-ahead run comes to the plate, and there are no outs. This could be a very interesting inning. Polanco gets his lead at first. Nobody out. Fastball laid off well below the knees. Boy, not exactly what you'd like as a pitcher. One of the keys is to minimize your pitches. Attack the strike zone early. A lot of deep counts and working himself into a lot of trouble. He's set and the 2-1 pitch. Can't connect there. It's 2-2. Two and two. Time to check our umpires in this one. Behind the plate is Freddie Ferguson. Hey, d -Row, you better be ready to swing, particularly at that low pitch. Freddie Ferguson, low ball umpire. Yeah, makes it tough on the offense. I, I was a guy who liked the low ball, but that usually means those guys are susceptible to that slider in the dirt. You have to see the ball up, and this guy doesn't give you a chance. And now they'll have runners at the corners to start off the inning. Hey, that pitch was nasty right there. He couldn't have done any more with that. For him to get a knock on this pitch right here, pretty special. So now to the plate, Nelson Cruz. And this ball runs away for ball two, two and one. Hasn't seen a heater yet in this at bat. One might be coming right here. Runners at the corners here, nobody out. Nearly got the inside, but ruled the ball. Pretty good pitch right there, fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. 3-1. And he misses with it. Ball four. So that'll load the bases. And now he's really going to need to get a ground ball. Well, this guy's been prone to giving up walks and bunches. And that's already two walks here in the early going. We'll see if this continues to be an issue for him as this start continues. So striding in, Eddie Rosario. As he's got a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing run just 90 feet away at third. Ready with the 1-1 pitch. It often becomes harder to hit the zone when the pressure starts to heat up. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. Oh, that's on this could be trouble now. It's three and one. Got a good spot to be in right now. A pitcher's fallen behind in the count with a guy up that hits really well with runners in scoring position. The 3 1. Now here's one hit in the air to the right side, but this is back into the seats of foul ball. Line drive to left. Catch made in left. Here comes the runner for the plate. Oh, but it's offline, so the run will score. Well, that wasn't your standard sack fly hit. It was hit pretty low and hard, so it wasn't a given they were going to set. But they did, and they add a number to the run column. Settling in now, Luis Arias. And now the Twins look to plate more in the opening frame. Lifted in the air toward the line and right. But this is just going to wind up being a foul ball.
Ready with another 2-2. Lifted down the line and left. Margo on his horse, but this will land untouched. It's going to be back to some serious teamwork if he can't put that pitch in play right in his wheelhouse. Tried to fool him with the changeup, but he won't offer at it. Three and two. You can certainly tell at bats like this one, frustrate the heck out of a pitcher. But you got to find a way to stay composed and execute your plan. On the ground to second base. This could be two. One there. Relay to first in time. And just like that, this side is retired. Twins forced to settle for one. One inning in the books here. All tied at one and one. Second inning set to go. And digging in is the rookie designated hitter, Yoshi Tsutsugo. The 1-1 one, one home. One of the things every pitcher wants to do is make sure that those hitters aren't very comfortable up there. See how he runs this hard one in right here? That's a pitch you just want to try to get a hitter to move his feet a little bit. Oh, and not an easy pitch to lay off of, but he did somehow, and he's got it to three and one. Popped him up. Garver has a play. One away. Five fifth. The book guy, Willie Adamas. Digging in, Willie Adamas. Lifetime against Jose Barrios. He's two for three. Ball and two strikes to the Rays shortstop. And two and two. It's up to a 3-2 full count now. Kevin Kiermeyer waits on deck. Drilled right back up the middle. And that'll find its way into center field for a one-out hit. Nice execution right there, Dan. Kept his front shoulder in. Kept his hands inside the baseball and ripped the base hit up the middle. And if you're a pitcher right there, you can't get discouraged. Sometimes even when you make a good pitch, the ball is going to find a hole somewhere. That one right up the middle. At the plate, Kevin Kiermeyer, High and deep to left center field. Looking up is Rosario. So a two-run shot to left center, his first homer here in the series, and it's given the Rays a three-to-one lead. Hey, every once in a while, this speed guy will jump up and bite one. He absolutely crushed that baseball. Doesn't fit his usual tool description, but he can go deep if you leave one over the heart of the plate. Into the box now, Manuel Margo. He'll try to bunt his way on as he gets this one down. And a wise decision there to make sure this ball stays foul, and that's the second strike. Can't quite nip the corner. It's a ball off the outside. Here's a weakly hit fly ball off to the left side. And that's in there. Base hit. You know, that's sort of a tough that's one tough. since it's only the second inning. But I think it's about like, knowing your pitcher and how they mm -hmm. respond. He's had some struggles here, so I think he's just reminding him to let those go and focus on the next batter. Into the box, Mike Zanino. A one-and-two count to the Rays catcher. 
threw that fastball right by him. He had no chance to get the barrel of that one. And a fastball swung on and missed as he just reared back there. Two away. Got him with a good high fastball there. Danny, we see a lot of that pitch in strikeout situations these days. What makes it so effective? I think, Matt, what makes it such a tough pitch is you're changing eye levels. That fastball up looks so enticing to hit that you think you see that ball as a hitter. Do you think you can drive it? But it's really hard to get on top of that good, high, hard fastball. Two ball, two and two. Hit well towards the hole. And that's through for a base hit. Make him one for two in this one. Dan, he's got to find a way to get himself out of this. This is constant traffic, and here he finds himself in the second with two outs, and he's still giving up knocks. Boy, it's about trying to limit the pitch count also. Only in the second inning here, and his pitch count's getting up, up, up. He's had a lot of traffic on the bases, so he really needs to get up. And we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three, and that will retire the side. Rays get a couple as you take another look at the two-run home run. On to the bottom of inning number two. It's now three to one, Tampa. Last half of the second set to go. And next to bat will be the first baseman, Miguel Sano. Hey, we're still in the early stages in this one. They're only down by a couple of runs. But it's really key for this leadoff guy to try to get on and get a big inning started. Fastball is right by him as he swings and misses for the first out of the inning. Now with the plate, Byron Buxton. The one-two. He is swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. And with two away, let's check in with our up-to-the-minute playoff bracket. And you can see our series at 1-0 as things are starting to heat up here as we get later into October. Bases are empty here with two men out. Just behind the fastball there, two strikes now. He's one pitch away from striking out the side, but even more than that, to throw a donut up after your offense put up some runs, I can't tell you what that means to the boys in the dugout. The one-two. Grounded back up the middle. Adamas brings it in. And safe at first on a bang-bang play as that last lunge was enough to beat the throw. And hey, that's great hustle right there out of the box. Not everybody's getting it right out of the shoot from step one, but I have to ask you, Dan, how frustrating executing a pitch and there's an infield knock. It is, D-Roy, and you can read that right off the bat as a pitcher. You can read the angle. You know that that ball is going to be hit on the ground, and you're thinking deep down inside, okay, there's a quick out, and it just wasn't meant to be. Swing and a miss on the fastball, and it's one and two. Well executed fastball right at the knees. Going to be a long day for this offense if he stays in that spot. Swung on and missed, and that's the final out of the inning. Twins wind up stranding one. They still trail it here three to one. Welcome back. Here's Heidi Watney with a report as we get set for the top of the third. Heidi? Matt, race manager Kevin Cash talked to me in between innings about his lineup's offensive production. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. They've been able to push across three runs to this point, but they've also made the opposition work extremely hard. He's thrown a lot of pitches, and they think they're going to have a good opportunity to push across a lot more runs as he tires or as they get into that bullpen. 
All right, Heidi, thank you. Top of the third set to get underway. And digging in next will be Joey Wendell. Yeah, that last at bat, Daddy, he turned that fastball around. He didn't hit it a ton. He didn't hit it a country mile. But, hey, listen, a home run is a home run. Buxton is there, and he has it for the first out. Now batting. Stepping up now, Austin Meadows. 0 for 1 here in the early going. Third inning here. 3 to 1 our score. And he fouls this one off. I love the fact that the hitter was able to foul that pitch away. I always thought with two strikes, you give the pitcher that inside part of the plate and you do your best to cover away. Two and two. And he tried to hold up that time. We'll get an appeal down to third and no swing. It's ball three. Too close for comfort and he did a good job just to make contact. The next three two. Gets him looking up around the letters. Now that doesn't do the hit. Next will be the designated hitter, Yoshi Tsutsugo. 0 for 1 after a pop out in foul territory his first time through. Yeah, this one's going to upset him for a little bit. You make the pitcher work the way he did right there, and that's the end result. That one sticks with you for a while. Two out, nobody on. Shoots this one over to first. Reined in. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. Down in order go the Rays, and it's still 3-1. to one. Bottom of the third now, and that'll bring up the switch-hitting shortstop, Jorge Polanco. swing there as he pulls it foul to the right side. Another full count pitch home. Freezes him. A strikeout looking. The third baseman. Leadoff man gone and that'll bring in the third baseman Josh Donaldson. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. And that's going to be high two and two now. Hey, if you're going to throw a pitch like that to this guy, that's right where you want to miss. Any lower, and he'll probably make you pay for it. Full count now. is swung on and missed his fifth strikeout already and there are two gone in the inning pretty impressive back to back strikeouts now to start the inning what's even hit. more important Delta. is now he gets to face the middle of the order without anybody on base for them to drive in in now Nelson Cruz Started to go. Did he hold up in time? Yes, says the first base umpire. It's ball three now. He loses him on ball four. Well, the reason power hitters generally draw more walks than other guys is exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. Next will be the cleanup hitter, Eddie Rosario. He hit a sack fly earlier. The 1-1 home. Popped him up. Diaz in foul ground into the stands he got it one left for Minnesota score holds it's three to one
Stepping into the box, Willie Adamas. He'll lead it off here against Jose Barrios. The 1 1. Misses off the plate. Change up, called a strike, and he comes back even at two and two. Probably better that he let that pitch go anyway. After seeing a lively fastball in the pitch before, it's pretty hard to sit back enough on a well thrown changeup. Into the windup, here comes the 2 2 pitch. There's a swing and a missile sent out to center field. Racing back to center fielder, gone to lead off the inning. So it's a solo shot to dead center. His first homer so far in the series. And Tampa Bay has taken a 4-1 to one lead. Man, this has been a rough one for this guy so far. That's the third homer he's allowed today. He better start keeping the ball down in the strike zone or that total might continue to rise. Stepping in now, Kevin Kiermeyer. And it's a ball and two strikes to Kiermeyer now. Well, it's been a rough one so far. Four runs through three innings. It's about time to get that pitch count down, or he won't be out here very long. The one two misses for the second ball. When he's pitching effectively, usually that two seam fastball is moving quite a bit, but here it's just kind of flat and straight could be a big part of the reason why he's getting knocked around the 2 2 look out don't want to hit him there it's full three and two Manuel Margo waits on deck that's lifted the other way out to left into a slide and he makes a great catch for the first down. Great play right there and I love the way he played it. Sometimes when you slide for a ball you give your eyes a little better angle to look up at it and you kind of get your whole body under it. He's clearly practiced that a lot and made it look really easy. The 3 2 pitch. And a fastball misses their ball four. Now that catches Mike Zunino. So a runner at first with one man gone, and that'll bring up the catcher, Mike Zanino. The 2 2. It is offered at and missed. He chased it for strike three. Wow, that's awfully impressive right there. The pitch before was really close. The call the ball. What does he do? He comes back with a better pitch and gets the punch out. To the plate now, Yandy Diaz. Two and one to the Rays leadoff batter. Some movement now in the Minnesota bullpen as a right-hander's up and throwing. Four runs, six hits, and no errors for Tampa Bay so far. There goes Margo. Strike taken. The throw is going to be far too late. That's a stolen base. Well, this pitcher's out there just trying to get hitters out, and he's having a hard time doing that. So as a base runner, that's a good time to try to steal some bases. He's probably not as focused on controlling the running game as he should be. Here now the 2-2 is looked at, and the count moves full. For the guy in the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. to the right side out of play. Ground ball sent back up the middle. And this gets right through him. And that may be a run. Ah, but the throw is well up the line and he scores easily. 
Boy, talking about picking your teammate up after that strikeout, Debo. Big, big, and I mean big, two hard RBI single. Yeah, way to come through for your team. When you take the donut off your bat right there, you're trying to pick up your teammate. He had the right game plan, didn't come outside it, stayed through the baseball, and was able to come through. At the plate, Brandon Lau. Maybe trying to back him up a bit there with the fastball. Looks like this guy's afraid to throw the ball in the strike zone. Gave up that home run earlier in the inning. Needs to get back to being aggressive. And he can't catch the corner here, so he's behind three and one. You look in the dugout, you can tell that manager's getting ready to come out on that top step. If he doesn't get out of this situation right here, and it's a tough one, I think the bullpen comes in. Coming up now on 30 pitches in the inning. But swing just a little early, and he'll see another payoff pitch. Trying to send him packing for the second time. There's a swing and a drive hit well out to right field, and that is off the wall. Diaz is on his way home. And he's safe at the plate as they push the lead to five now. So much of this game is situational hitting, guys. Nice job there. Yeah, you've got to find a way to pick your teammates up when you're given the chance. And he doesn't try to do too much right here. He just takes what's there. Safely on second, and his buddy is high-fiving teammates in the dugout. Here's the Minnesota skipper making his way out to the mound. And it looks as though that's going to be all for his starter here tonight. So as he leaves, I would imagine these fans would not be much pleased with his performance here this evening as he certainly was not sharp. Fernando Romero answers the call from the pen here in the fourth as they didn't get the outing they were hoping for from the starter. Into the box now, Joey Wendell. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Three runs already home here. To two and two now. Right at the third baseman, and that'll end the inning. So three runs on three hits, no errors, and a man left. On now to the bottom half of inning number four. Tampa Bay leads this one 6-1. to one. Now in the box, Luis Arias. He's 0-1 for 1 thus far. Are up the middle. And this is going to scoot on through into center for a base hit leading off the inning. Hey, some guys can handle the postseason lights, and this is obviously one of them. Another base hit leading off for the boys. This guy's had a monster postseason so far. Standing in now, Miguel Sano fouled off. The next three two and it's fouled away payoff pitch one more time chopped at third tough to get two fielded cleanly there's one on the first and it's a double play the second they've hit into in these first four innings and there are two away now Made him throw a lot of pitches in that at bat, but he'll take the double play as a trade off for sure. Here's Byron Buxton now. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Fouled away.
Swing and a ball hit on the ground. Going to be a tough play. And the throw just does beat him at the bag, so the side is retired. Twins retired in short order. The lead remains five. It's six to one. All set for the start of the inning. And Austin Meadows will be the next to bat. And it's two balls and two strikes now. He'll be fine coming out of the bullpen in this one if he can keep the ball around the knees like that. Not where he wanted that fastball to be, and it's three and two now. Looked like he tried to elevate a fastball on that 2-2 pitch there, but kind of overdid it. With a pitch that high, it's pretty easy to lay off if you're the hitter. High and deep down the left field line. And this will wind up a foul ball. A payoff pitch one more time. Ground ball right into the shift. He gets dirty, but he can't make the play. It's a base hit. Hey, some guys look out there, Dan. They don't care. They can't execute the ball the other way. It's not that easy. They're going to hit it as hard as they can right into the shift and let the chips fall where they may. You know, it's hard, D-Row, when you've come up all the way through high school, little league, college ball, and the minor leagues, and you're used to pulling the ball. That's the type of hitter you are. Some of these hitters are going to have to try to make some changes with these exaggerated shifts. So now to the plate, Yoshi Tsutsugo drives it out to deep right center field. And this ball is gone. No chance to make a play on that one. So it's a two-run shot to right center, his second home run of the series, as this is now a seven-run ball game. Well, they've got the elevate and celebrate thing working in this one, guys. That was their fourth big fly of the game. Yeah, Dan, this doesn't make sense. It's absolutely freezing outside. The last place you want to be is in a batter's box, and this offensive team is driving balls out of the yard. This is what's crazy about the game of baseball, D-Row. You would think under these conditions it would be all in favor of the pitchers. That has been anything but the case so far in this one. To two balls and two strikes now. Eight runs and even ten hits. And no errors for Tampa Bay so far. Line to the right side. But a foul ball. The 2-2 one more time. Line shot to first. And there's one away. Into the box now. Kevin Kiermeyer. He flew out in his last at-bat. Still only one out in the inning. And he takes ball four, so he's on. And as you know, that often means the steal could be in order here. What's the saying? Now, when you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you should do is stop digging. Well, the guy on the bump obviously hasn't heard that one. Now with the plate, Manuel Margot. Now a ball swung on and heading for the stands in right. And that'll move the count to one and two now. And he's back in standing. Runner at first here, one man out. Pulls this one in the air out to left. Rosario is there. He's got it and there are two down now. So here's Mike Zanino. Two out with the man at first. Tough fastball that time, but he hangs with it to stay alive. Got him. And he goes down on strikes for the third time. 
Rays get a couple as you take another look at the two-run home run. Bottom of the fifth coming up. It's the Rays eight and the Twins one. Welcome back to Target Field as we send it to Heidi Watney. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Twins to discuss his thoughts on Minnesota's lineup so far. And he told me the quality of their swings needs to improve as the game moves forward. He said they're searching for ways to drive the ball with some authority because it's just not happening for them today. They haven't gotten an extra base hit yet, so it's been a real struggle getting guys into scoring position. But the key, he said, is not to panic. Sometimes you just have to fight through the downturns and keep your focus and energy high. Thank you, Heidi. The one two. Action in the Rays pen now as they've got a lefty and a right hander up and throwing. Full count to Max Kepler three balls and two strikes. You do not want to walk the eight hole hitter. It just opens up so many options. Do we bunt them over to second with the nine hole hitter? Do we try and play for that big rally with the top of the order coming up? This is a huge pitch. You can't allow this guy to walk. Adamas picks it up. Throw on to first in time, one away. Digging in for his second at bat, Mitch Garver. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. One and two to the Twins catcher. 88 on a changeup? I remember when an 88 mile an hour fastball wasn't all that bad. Man, the game's changing. Here's a breaking ball, but it doesn't quite find the strike zone. What pitch recognition right there. 90% of the guys are going fishing after that nasty slider. Weighing inside with that one, a pretty easy take there. Well, he really needs to make this guy swing the bat right here. He's not the type of hitter you want to dance around with. Skied into very shallow right. Meadows is there, and he makes the catch for the out. So the lineup flips over and digging in for Polanco. He was sent packing on strikes in his last trip. Bases are empty here with two men out. And that's ball three now as it just misses below the zone. Team's been struggling on offense. Let your D work for you right here. Pound the zone. Fly ball out to straightaway right. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. Down go the Twins in order. It's still an 8-1 to one ball game. Digging in and looking for more, Yandy Diaz. So far, two for three in this one. The 2-1. Drill down the line. But this will be a foul ball as that evens things at two and two. Fly ball out to straightaway right. Kepler's there for it. He's got it one away. Now batting. Number eight. Trying to pick things up where he left off. Brandon Lau hoping to build off that RBI double from his last plate appearance. Well, he got a good pitch to hit last time up. Looked for it up in the zone and didn't miss it. Those are the pitches you only get. Maybe once an A.B., maybe once a game, maybe once a week. So he certainly capitalized on it last time. Sano is over, and he tucks it away for the second out. Now that. So two okay. outs now in the Tampa Bay yeah. sixth. And digging in next will be Joey Wendell. Two out, nobody on. Swing and a liner. And that's in there, so perhaps some life here with two men out. 
Hey, just a nice piece of hitting right there. He's able to keep his hands inside that ball, stay square as long as possible, and feed it into the opposite field for a base hit. Here's a look over to first and a dive, but he's back in there. At the plate now, Austin Meadows hit back up the middle. On to second for the force out, and the side is retired. So no runs here on a base hit, no errors, and one man left aboard. On to the bottom of inning number six. The Rays lead it 8-1. to one. Brendan McKay enters to do the pitching in the bottom of the sixth. Number 49, Brendan McKay. Ready for another shot now. Josh Donaldson. He's set to lead it off in the Minnesota end of the sixth. All even now, two and two. The pitch. Swing and a miss as he ran the fastball right by him for the first down. Well, you got to love a live young arm. He's got an electric fastball. And if he can That's learn to harness that and work in his there. solid secondary stuff, he's going to have a really nice career on the mound. Not everyone is gifted with a fastball like that. Into the box, Nelson Cruz. And he's a little too high with that one. Two balls and a strike. Now some action out in the bullpen as a lefty and a right-hander begin throwing. A swing and a miss there. Two and two. Full count. Three balls and two strikes to the Twins DH. You know he's probably cheating on that inside pitch after he got jammed earlier. If you're on the mound right now, you want to try to hit that outside corner, and there's a pretty good chance you'll get him to roll over something. A little tardy on that swing as it's well wide of furs. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Lau is calling for it. He's got it, and there are two down now. So digging in now, Eddie Rosario. In his last at-bat, he popped out in foul ground. Yeah, Matt, he's got to make an adjustment right here. His swing definitely broke down, dropped his back shoulder, and thus the result was a terrible pop-up foul. Easy fly ball into shallow center field. Kiermaier is there, and he'll put it away to retire the side. Twins are set down one, two, three. It's still an eight to one ball game. New inning set to get underway and striding forward the designated hitter, Yoshi Tsutsugo. And that last at bat when he went deep, he turned around a pretty good fastball. So I'm kind of thinking this guy's a good fastball hitter. So I might want to move that ball up and down and in and out and try not to throw it right down the middle of the plate. Now a ball lined to the left side. But this is a foul ball. Another 1-2 delivery. Line, that's a base hit. Wow, I'm shocked he even pulled the trigger on that pitch. He might have been fooled right there, but he was able to keep his hands back and scramble a good pitch for a base hit. To the plate now, Willie Adamas. Yank the slider across that time, laid off for a ball. Now the Twins are going to get a lefty up and throwing in the bullpen. Oh. 
Set to deliver on two and one. Now this is out in front. Maybe tough to get to. And this is going to work out for him. It's an infield single to make it first and second now. Boy, when things are good, things are going really good. How about a swinging bunt infield single right there for his third knock of the game, D-Row? Yeah, he has to be feeling frisky right now. He's had two great at-bats, and then this one, he's 100% on fire. Getting an infield single for his third knock of the game, that's awesome. Tyler, Tyler Clippard comes on to pitch now, hoping for better results than the other arms that they've run out there in this one. In now, Kevin Kiermeyer. And this is swung on and missed. And boy, they took care of a key man now there. Down. One away. One out now in the Tampa Bay seventh. And that'll bring up the versatile center fielder, Manuel Margot. Tried to crush that ball. And now perhaps needs to shorten up with two strikes. Payoff pitch home. Oh, and this one's driven the other way and deep to the corner. And this is turning ugly now as this ball's down for extra bases. Boy, there's a long drive bullet off the wall right there. But the outfielder does a really good job, d -roll, of getting that one quickly and getting it back in to keep him at first for a long single. Yeah, and also a nice job by the base runner not there. Not putting his head down, being over-aggressive and getting thrown out at second base. He saw the play happen in front of him and put the brakes on and got back from base hit. Yeah, d -roll, I think he would have been toast if he tried to stretch that one into a double. Into the box now, Mike Zanino. Two and two. Two two is a changeup that misses three and two. Bases are loaded with only one out. And he'll strike out here yet again. As it's been a ball game to forget thus far. Four strikeouts. Wow, he's just a lost cause in this one. That's the fourth time he struck out in this game alone, and that's not something you'll forget very quickly. That's about as bad of a day as you can have. Stepping in now, Yandy Diaz. Now a ball hit in the air, and this looks like it'll get him out of it. Kepler is there as he makes the catch, and they'll tight rope out of danger as he strands the bases loaded. Rays leave him loaded, and it remains an 8-1 to one ball game. Now at the plate, Luis Arias, a hit in two tries so far. Missed the target there with the curveball, and it's two and one now. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Margo's under it, makes the play one away. So the big bat of Miguel Sano digs in next. It's been an 0 for 2 effort for him to this point. Stand alive, putting together a really good at bat here. Looked like the cut fastball there, and he got him to swing through it for the second out. Now so striding forward now, Byron Buxton. He was a ground out victim last time up. Bases are empty here with two men out. Buxton ahead in the count. Three balls and a strike. Max Kepler would be next.
full count three and two. And the cutter got him swinging strike three and the side is retired. Down go the twins in order. It's still an eight to one ball game. Number 72 takes the mound as he's been called upon to pitch. Number 72. Ready to begin the eighth, and next the dangerous power threat, Brandon Lau. Ready with two balls and a strike. Line drive, and that's a base hit into center field. So it's a good start to the inning for the Rays as their leadoff hitter is aboard. You don't get too many pitches a day in the big leagues middle cut. His eyes lit up right there. This pitcher's lucky he's not getting another ball from the umpire. At the plate now, Joey Wendell. Outside and low that time. Now it's two balls and two strikes. With this one almost in books, the story was clearly the long ball. What are your thoughts on this offense, fellas? Well, Matty V, I don't know what your thoughts are, d -Row, but boy, when the weather starts to warm up and the ball starts jumping out like this, it's clear that the pitchers need to start making better pitches. Yeah, just great approach. No one really chased today. Really stayed staunch on, uh, on their ability to get that pitcher to come into the heart of the plate, and they did damage. Now battle. The right field. Standing in, Austin Meadows. He comes into this appearance in the midst of a one for four day. Maybe too much break on the slider. Two and one. Hot shot down the line. And this will stay inside the third base bag. A fair ball. And they'll have runners at second and third following the one out double. The good news for pitchers in this part is that it doesn't give up many home runs. A lot of room in the outfield. Sometimes that's the bad news as well, though, because there's a lot of space for hits to get down and to go for extra bases just like that. At the plate, Yoshi Tsutsugo. Slider, more of a slurve right there, but it's one and two. He got him, and it'll probably take a base hit now to get that runner across from third. Yeah, as they say, there's a hole in his swing in that location, so a good job there of exploiting that. That can be real hard for some guys to overcome when teams start figuring out what locations you just can't handle. To the plate now, Willie Adamas. And he'll fall behind now to one and two. Looking to wiggle out of this, here it is. Now a ball lying toward the gap in left center. Oh, and this deflects right off him. The throw into second. Throw to second, but he's in there. As they also score a pair of runs on the play. I mean, that had to feel good right there, Dan. That's his third RBI of the game and extends his team's lead. They might have this one locked up. Well, I tell you, those are always big, those add-on insurance runs. Big RBI right there for a little bit more breathing room. In now, Kevin Kiermeyer. One, one and two. two And the inning goes away in unceremonious fashion on a swing and a miss at a ball way outside the strike zone. So it's two runs on three hits, no errors, and a runner left on. Not too many more shots left. Home half of the eighth coming up. The Rays are out in front, 10 to 1. Bottom of inning number eight set to go. And next it'll be the outfielder, Max Kepler. Now the 2-1 pitch. This is pulled into right. That gets down. He's got himself a base hit. And the Twins have something brewing right away. It's a leadoff double. 
No doubt about it. He was looking fastball all the way there, and that's exactly what he got. Got the barrel out front and just blasted it down the line for an extra base hit. Nobody out. Runner in scoring position. Great opportunity here. Into the box now. Mitch Garver. Oh, they really bunch him up on that one as he swings and misses for the first out. That has to make you feel really good as a pitcher, right? You're making your pitches all around the zone, and then you bring that one inside. You can't do anything with it. What does it do? It just locks you up inside. You have no chance to put the ball in play. Stepping in now, Jorge Polanco. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. The one-two. Line drive to left. And that's in there. Base hit. Kepler rounds third and is digging for the plate. He scores as they inch back here, but there's still a ways to go. Definitely tried to elevate the heater right there with two strikes, but caught the way too much of the plate. Nice execution by the hitter. So now to the plate, Josh Donaldson. And this is on the ground to short. Could be two. On to first as they get the double play to get him out of the inning. Twins get a run on two hits. Game two heads to the ninth inning. It's the Rays 10 and the Twins 2. Tyler Duffy enters now in a mop-up role as he'll try to keep the deficit right where it is. Tyler Duffy. Coming to the plate now, Manuel Margot. It was a single for him in his last at bat. One and two now as that one's fouled off. Now the pitch. Not your normal put away pitch. A two strike fastball down in the zone, but he was able to get wood on it and foul it away. Hit high and deep to right center. Kepler's on the move. He gets there to make the play for the first out of the inning. Stepping into the box, Mike Sonino. Been a really tough one on him. Already wearing the golden sombrero with four strikeouts. Bases are empty, one man out. him up. Sano moving to his left. Makes the play and there are two gone now. The first base is number two. Stepping in, Yandy Diaz. He's looking for his third hit of the ball game here. Now the three and two pitch. Gets him looking up around the letters. Rays go in order. One, two, three. And the lead stays at eight. It's ten to two. And that'll bring up the big stick of Nelson Cruz. He's the one to start things off with his guys in danger of seeing this series leveled at a game apiece barring a ninth inning rally. One one and he fouls this one off the one two is a wave and a miss he struck him out good job of making him chase a pitch for the strike out there yeah Matt that's the advantage of getting ahead in the count you can really force hitters to expand their zone and protect and when they're in that mode getting them to go after a pitch they can't do much with becomes a lot easier standing in now Eddie Rosario this is in the air to left field Margo's under it two down up next for Minnesota Luis Arias it was a fly out for him in his last trip two out nobody on final strike for the twins Fastball too high. Ball four. 
That is just a great at bat there. When you're down late, you need base runners Number any way you can get them. And that oh, never say die mentality yeah. could be the difference. We'll see how it plays out. Here's Miguel Sano. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. A runner on first with two away. Hit hard towards center. And that'll get down for a base hit. I know the score's out of hand right here, but I've never met a big league ball player that's going to give away an at bat in any game ever. Nice piece of hitting right there. Staying within yourself and grabbing you a knot. Chaz Rome will make an appearance here as he is in charge of trying to ring up the final out of the ball game. Into the box, Byron Buxton. Three balls and two strikes to the twin center fielder. Great take right there, but the last thing you want to do is be called out on strikes to end the game. them down to their final strike here it comes swing and a miss he struck him out and that'll do it here as the ball game is over it seemed like everyone had a hand in this win and that's usually the case when you win a game by eight runs feels good to dominate a game like that Well, this one pretty much over before it started as we give you a final look at the line score here in what turned out to be a blowout victory. And there's no better time of year to come up big for your team than in the postseason. And that's exactly what this man did. He's our tops player of the game. And obviously, every game is so important in the postseason. So when you come to play like he did and make a big difference for your team, it's something that won't be forgotten. Ten to two, the final in this game. The Rays even up this league championship series at one game apiece. Tyler Glasnow earns the victory on the mound. Jose Barrios struggled and gets the loss after giving up six earned. So that's a wrap here tonight for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, and Heidi Watney. This is Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, find us on Twitter at MLB The Show. The final line score for our ball game tonight.